Hi, this is Dr. Eddie Morgan over at Clovis East High School. We want to get you ready for the test coming up, the Unit 7 test. So let's walk through the Unit 7 review, which pretty much goes over the kind of problems you're going to have on the test. So let's get started. Problem number one gives us the following diagram. You see three lines intersecting at point N, and it asks us the first question. It says, can we name two lines in the figure? Well, first of all, let's just pick one line and then we'll name two points on that line and use the double arrow symbol over the letter. So here's a line here, you see, going from A, N, and X. And notice I can name this with any two letters. So for example, I could name it AX, I could name it AN, or I could name it NX, or I could even go backwards on each of those. Now, if I want a different line, pick a different line here going through C, N, and X, and notice I can name CM, CN, and NM. There's even a third line that I could name points on, and that's here going through RN. And I could name that RN, or I could turn around and name it NR. So remember, when you're naming a line because it goes both directions, your letters can go both directions too. And it only takes two points to define a line, even if a line has three points. Problem 1B uses the same diagram and asks us to name four points that are not collinear. Well, the easiest way to do this is simply to pick a line, name two points that are on that line, and then name another point that's not on the line. All right, that's going to give me three points that are not collinear. I could add another point. So, for example, here's a line A, N, and X. A, N, and X are all collinear, so I just need to pick another point that's not on there. So notice coming out of the page is, is, is point R here. So I could name A, N, and R, or I could name A, N, and C down here. Okay. So the easiest way to do this is pick some, pick some points on a line and then pick a point that's not on the line. If I choose this line here, I got C, I got N, I got M, and now pick a point that's not on the line, like X, or maybe like A. So see, C, N, X uh, would be three points that are not collinear. C and R would not be collinear. And then we could do the same here. I have R and N and a multiple variety of, of points that are possible there. So pretty easy to do. Just find, uh, just make sure there are not all four points on the same line. And that does it. Problem 1C is actually kind of tricky. It says name three points that are not coplanar. Well, normally any three points that form a triangle also define a plane. So for example, notice R, N, M, that forms a plane. So, and, and here again, A, N, C, that's a plane. So if I could find, so can you find three points that don't form a triangle? Uh, the only way that three points cannot form a triangle is if they're on the same line. So my first thought is maybe I look at a line like the red line here, A, N, and X, and I say, okay, points A, N, and X uh, do not form a plane. However, notice that all three of those points are in plane V. Uh, so as a result of that, I actually cannot find three points that are not coplanar. Even three points that are collinear still lie in a plane, no matter where I look. So it's impossible to find three points that are not collinear. Problem 1E asks us to state three different ways to name the line AN. So there's our line AN. All we have to do is name any two points on this line in any order. Just make sure when we name them, we use our double arrow symbol. So for example, I can pick A and N and X. So I have AX and XA. I have AN and NA, just reversing them each time, and I have NX and XN. So that's with three points. I've named six different ways that I can name the exact same line. Problem 1F asks us to name four different types ways to name plane V. Well, plane V is, if you can imagine looking at it, is like the table. And all the points on, on that listed there are on that table except for R. R is a part of that line that's coming through the middle of the table there. So as we get started here, we just have to think there's our plane. 
I just need to name any three points in the plane that are not collinear. You know, again, I, as long as I don't use R, I'm pretty good, as long as they're not in the same line. So I can form a triangle in the plane and name the plane with these angles. So, for example, I could name this A and C. A and C, all, A, N, and C are all in plane V, and they're not in the same line. Okay. I could also name N, M, X. M, N, and X are also in the same plane. And there's a multiple number of ones that we could do. I could, uh, all kinds of other planes. Any triangle you can form in that plane, pick any three letters in the plane, don't include R, and make sure that they're not on a line together, and you, and you can name that. Problem 1G says to name two opposite rays. Well, to do this, we just need to find a line with at least three points. Okay, so there's a line, A and X. And now let the middle point be the end point of the rays. Notice that both rays have a starting point, and so they're going to have the same name. So I'm going to have NA going to the left, and I'm going to have NX going to the right. Now it says name a different pair. Well, we just need to find a different line with three points. So there's a different line, C and M. Let N be the middle again, and I'll have the pair NC going down and NM going up. Both of those are op pairs of opposite rays, sometimes called a linear pair because they together they form a straight line. Problem 1H asks this couple questions. First, does point M lie on line RN? Well, there's point M, and RN is the line going through the plane. And notice they do not touch. So the answer there is no. Point M is not on RN. Now, point X. Does point X lie on AN? When AN lies there, notice that the plane AN goes right through X. So in this case, the answer is yes. X is on the line AN. Does point R lie on plane ACN. Notice ACN lies in the plane V. It's flat, but point R is above it. So as a result, we would have to say no, R does not lie in that plane. Some more questions on, on I. Is AN, the segment AN, in the same plane as RN? Okay. So notice AN and RN actually form a little triangle, uh, and so as a result, we could say, yes, the lines intersect. They're going to form a plane, and I could call the plane RARN. Second one, is CX in the same plane as RN? Well, we look at this one closely here. We see CX goes that way, but RN goes there, and you can see that they miss each other. They're what we call skewed lines, so they, they are not in the same plane. The lines don't intersect. Is AN in the same plane as MN? Well, there's AN and MN. Notice I could draw a triangle with them. It's two lines that intersect at N, so they would also be in the same plane. One J asks us, does the line segment AN plus NX equal AX? Now, we're not talking about lines. We're just talking about line segments. And we're talking about the measure of them. So first of all, notice AN and NX. Yeah, AN and NX. You look at those two segments, you put them together, and you do get AX. So that's yes. It forms a line segment there. Well, they're all connected with the same line. Does CR... And RM equals CM. Well, notice C goes up to R and then comes down to M. That's not the same as the line going through CM. So, no, that's, they don't form a line together. They're not on the same line. Does the line CN plus NM equals CM? Now, notice here we have the notation for line. Remember that a line goes infinitely in both directions. So the fact that they're all, I'm naming two points doesn't mean each line has infinite length. We can't add lines. We can only add line segments. So here we can't add two lines because they're both infinite in width. Problem two enters into a discussion between John and Mary. Point K, it says, lies on PQ. 
and point L lies on TQ. John claims that all three of these points can be collinear, and Mary, sa Mary says that they do not have to be collinear. collinear. So they want us to draw a diagram to support John and one to support Mary. Okay, so let's get started with John. First of all, John, you see, thinks that PQ and TQ are on the same line. And in this case, I could put K between PQ and I could put L between Q. And sure enough, they're all collinear. They're all on the same line. However, Mary recognizes that this is not how it has to be. Notice that she notices that PQ and TQ may not be on the same line. So you notice PQ and then it turns left to go to QTQ. And see, now if I put K in between there and L, I can conclude with Mary, all three of these points are not on the same line. So that's where you have to think, what, what's being asked here? Two different people see it differently, how they see those points. Problem three gives us a diagram, gives us a number line with some points on it, and asks us to find the length of different segments. First one says, find the length between H and I. Okay. So the way we find the distance between two points is we take the two points and we subtract them one from the other, and we use the absolute value of that number. We use the absolute value because distance, the length is always something positive. So if we end up with a negative four, we know the length is really positive four. And if it's positive, we leave it alone. So in this case, we're going to subtract this. So we have minus six minus a subtract two. Be careful here, we're subtracting negative two. So uh, minus six, when I have subtracting, remember the subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. So I can change this to adding, and the opposite of 2 is plus 2. So this is the same as minus 6 plus 2. And we end up with uh, the absolute value of negative 4, or, which is 4. And notice if you count here, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 is our distance here. In B, similar problem, we're going to do between K and G. So I'm going to do, um, once again, I'm going to do 2 minus a negative 10. So 2 minus a 10 becomes 2 plus 10, or 12 is our answer there. By the way, notice here again, it didn't matter which order. Come back to A here. If I did minus 2, subtract minus 6, Again, minus a minus becomes plus 6. And you see I would end up with plus 4, but the absolute value is 4. So either way I do it, I get the same answer. That's why we use the absolute value, because we want the distance there. For the next two problems in C, we're asked to find the midpoint. So a little different, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two numbers add them together and divide by two, kind of like finding an average like we did in our last chapter. So I end up here, I want to find the, the midpoint between H and J. So I'm looking for where's the middle. You can almost eyeball it there, but let's look at how we do it mathematically. I'm going to take minus six plus zero and divide them by two. Add them together, minus six divided by two is minus three. So it says that my midpoint is right here. And if you look there, it's three on this side and three on this side. And so sure enough, that is our midpoint. Our midpoint is minus three. Okay. So let's do it with the other one between G and K, between here and here. So we're going to add the two numbers together, two and minus 10. And that becomes minus eight divided by two is negative four. And it says that that's the halfway point between those two. You notice one, two, three, four, five, six, six on this side, and one, two, three, four, six on this side. So sure enough, negative four is our midpoint. Problem four shows us a line segment, PQR, and it tells us that PQ, that this part here is three X plus eight. And it says, is this segment over here, QR, is 7x minus 3. But then it tells us that the whole length is 45. 
it wants us to find out what X is and what each of the segments equal. So first of all, according to the segment addition postulate, I know that PQ plus QR added together equal the whole thing. So let's substitute in the values that we have. So I have 3X plus 8, 7X minus 3, those two add up to 45, and now it's a little bit of an algebra problem. Okay. Make this straighter for you to see. So we add the combined like terms. I get 10x plus 5 equals 45. Subtract 5 from both sides. 10x equals 40. Divide by 10. And I get x equals 4. So that's my first answer. Now I use that value of x to plug back into PQ and QR to get our answers. So PQ is 3 times 4 plus 12. So that's 12 plus 8 is going to be 20. And QR is going to be 7 times 4 minus 3. 7 times 4 is 28 minus 3 is 25. And just as a check, notice that 20 and 25 do equal 45, which is what we started with. 4B is very much like 4A. Notice it tells us right away. It tells us that PQ, this segment here, equals 5. And it tells us that QR is 3x minus 2, but this time the whole length RP is going to equal 7x minus 9. All right, so once again, we're going to use the segment addition postulate to notice that PQ plus QR equals PR, and then we substitute. For PQ, that's 5, QR is 3x minus 2, and PR is 7x minus 9. Okay. So let's combine like terms. 3x plus 3 equals 7x plus 9. Let's subtract 3x from both sides. Let's add 9 to both sides. And let's divide each side by 4, and we get that x equals 3. Now let's plug them in. We know that PQ, PR, is 7 times 3, 21 minus 9, which is going to be 12. And QR is 3x, 3 times 3 is 9 minus... 2 is 7. And notice again, we can check our answer out. 5 plus 7 indeed equals 12. So we know we got our right answer. Problem 5 states that A is the midpoint of a segment BC. Draw a diagram that represents this information and then for, uh, for each problem. So first of all, A is in the middle of BC. So I draw a line segment, and now I'm going to label what I have here. AB is 7x minus 9. AC is 5x minus 1. Now they want us to find what's the length. First thing I notice is by definition of a midpoint, AB equals AC. So let's substitute in here. 7x minus 9 equals 5x plus 1, and we'll solve. Subtract 5x from both sides. Add 9 to both sides. Divide by 2. I find out that X is 4. Now I can find out what BC is. Well, AB is 7 times 4 minus 9. That's 28 minus 9 or 19. By the way, AC, I should already know that's going to be 19, but just as a double check, 5 times 4 is 20 minus 1 is 19. And those are the midpoints. And, well, my whole line is just going to add them together. 19 plus 19, and my answer is 38. Problem 5 is similar again. Same diagram. A is the midpoint of BC. We draw the information. This time AB, 7x plus 6. BC is the whole length is 68, and they want us to find AC. In this case, you remember the midpoint. Those two are equal. Also, by definition, AC is going to be half of BC. So let me substitute now. AC is going to be equal one half of 68. So AC is going to equal 34. I don't even have to do much algebra on that one. So our answer is 34. 7A asks us to name angle 4 in two ways. You can see angle 4 sits right here. I can draw the lines around it like that. And remember that we can name an angle in either direction the only key is the vertex has to be in the middle. So I can name MPL, start at the top, come down and go to the right, or I can start with L and come over LPM. All right. And those would be two ways. Number seven says, add a, name a pair of opposite rays. 
Opposite rays have the same vertex but go in the opposite direction and form a straight line. They're sometimes called a linear pair for this reason. All right, so let's find a straight line with three points and use the middle point as the end point of the two rays. So for example, here's one. P is straight line. P is in the middle. So I could name this as PO and PL. Together they form a straight line. I could pick another line though here, the blue one, PN and PQ. Again, notice PN and PQ both start with P because they're rays. The third line there only has two points named now, so I can't name an opposite ray for that one. 7C asks us to name an angle that is adjacent to 4. Now remember, an adjacent angles are next to each other. They share a common side and a vertex. So when I look at that angle, first thing, let's consider sharing one with the side PM right here. Okay? Well, that's going to be this angle here. They'll both have the same side. And so my angle there is going to be NPM. By the way, I could have also picked another angle that went all the way over here as well and had OPM as well. But they would same, they share the same side PM. Okay. Now, on the other hand, I could go the other way too and look at the one that shares this side here. Okay. The PL. And that would be this angle here. So in that case, I would have angle QPL, and notice again, it shares the Kalman side of PL. And once again, I could have had an adjacent angle go all the way over here as well. They just have to share a common side and a common vertex. Problem seven, D, E, and F ask us to name different types of angles we see. First one says name an acute angle. Remember, acute angle is less than 90 degrees greater than zero and less than 90, and there's a whole bunch of them here. Notice I have uh, OPN, that one there. I have NPM, that one there. See, they're all less. I have MPL, less than, and I have LPQ. All four of those are less than 90 degrees. Now name an obtuse. An obtuse is greater than 180, uh, uh, greater than 90 and less than 180. So we have a bunch of those we can name. Here I have Q, P, uh, Q, P, O. So notice this would be a big angle right here. I could also name, by the way, Q, P, M, if I wanted to angle Q, P, M. And there's several more we could name that are bigger than 90, but less than that. Finally, it asks for a straight angle. That's going to be one that forms a straight line, two angles that form a straight line. And notice I could add here, since we're only adding two, I'm going to name here OPL, a straight angle. Well, this a straight angle forms one line, so we got all the way across. That forms a straight line. That's a straight line. Well, likewise, I could name the other line here and have that equation as well, NPQ. Those are straight angles because they form completely a straight line. Problem 7G asks us to name two angles that are congruent and why. Well, the easiest way to do this is to look for vertical angles. Okay, Vertical angles are any angles formed when two lines cross, the opposite angles are vertical and they are equal. So notice here, OPN is here, and then right across from it is QPL. So you cross that, and notice they're formed by two straight lines, and they make congruent angles. Vertical angles, they're congruent, we know, because they are vertical. 7H asks us to name two angles that are supplementary, and why? Supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees, which is a straight line. So we're looking, you know, find yourself a straight line and then look at two angles that make it up. Okay. So for example, OPQ, if I look there, OPQ is made up of two angles. Uh, OPQ here.
and QPL. See, those two lines make up that whole angle. And I could use the other line over here and make up two that go to, they make that, that one as well. I could pick on the red line, I could pick that angle and that angle, those two angles. Any two angles that add up to 180. 0.7 says, what's the point P in the angle LPQ? And, of course, when you look at that, the point is right at the corner of the angle, and that's called the vertex. The sides of LPU are sometimes called rays. Notice they start at P, and they go out in both directions. In problem 8, we're going to use some algebra to discover the values of these angles. Notice we have a diagram. It tells us that the measure of o, angle OPN is 4x minus 20. So I just kind of marked that in there, 4x minus o n OPN. And then the other one, MPN, is 3x plus 14. And then it tells me that the whole angle in both of them is 162 degrees. So now it wants me to find what x and find the value of uh, OPN. Okay. So according to the angle, po angle addition postulate, these two angles that we marked here add up to the whole angle together. So we substitute in what we know. We get 4x minus 20 plus 3x plus 14 equals 162. And now we use algebra to solve. Combine terms. Add 6 to both sides. Divide by 7. And we find that x is 24. And now to find the measure of OPN, make sure you pick the right formula. Put in 4 times 24 minus 20. And we end up with 76 is our answer. Problem 9 says that ray AB bisects an angle ACD, I mean CAD, and they want us to find, and they also tell us that the CAD is 38 degrees. First, they tell us to draw a diagram. So let's draw a diagram that's about 38, about 40 degrees, and then cut it in half. So notice CAD, the whole blue angle, is 38 degrees, and it's cut in half. Well, if you cut it in half, that means that the angle CAB is half of 38. So half of 38 is simply going to be 19 degrees. And that's our answer. Problem 10 says that I have two angles, angle LMN and angle NMR, and they're complementary. Well, you remember complementary means the two angles add up to 90 degrees. But then it tells us that one of the angles is 30. Okay. So first it says draw a diagram. Well, I have to draw a diagram of two angles that form a right angle here. These two angles form a right angle. And, they add, and one of them here is 30 degrees. So I know that's 30 degrees. Okay. So complementary angles add up to 90. So I put in what I know. One of them is 30. So I guess what the other is going to be. Pretty simple. The other is going to be 60 degrees. 30 and 60 add up to 90 degrees. Problem 11 says, asks us to look at the figure at the right and ask to answer this question. Where do the planes ACDE and ABFE intersect? Whenever two planes intersect, they always intersect at a line. Just like two lines intersect at a point, two planes intersect at a line. So let's find these out first. First of all, ACDE Notice I color it in blue. It's the left side of this pyramid, uh, triangular pr uh, prism. ABFE is the right side. So look, where do those two cross? And it's right at this line, AE, and that's the answer. All right, I hope this helps you. I hope you do well on our upcoming test. Have a great evening.